Hello everyone, N5TXL here and welcome to the first video on my channel. This channel will be about all things ham radio, from how-tos to reviews and my own personal adventure in the hobby. I'm fairly new to the hobby though, but I've been around long enough to have an appetite and uh, we're going to jump right in and explore everything that we can. Uh, I am looking forward to having some other hams across the world help out on the channel as we explore equipment and setups. I'll frequently need uh, some volunteers to test the setup with. If you're interested, please be sure and comment down below and I'll be happy to include you on an upcoming video. Otherwise, I do ask you go ahead and click that subscribe button and like the video so that YouTube's algorithms can help us find each other in new videos in the future. So let's get into this video. This first video is going to be all about Echolink. If you haven't heard of it yet, Echolink is software for your Windows PC, Android, or iOS cell phone, which allows you to connect directly to repeaters all over the world via the internet. It's a fairly straightforward installation process and you shouldn't have too much trouble getting it installed and working. So for this video, we'll be installing Echolink on a Windows computer. Uh, what you're going to need is a computer that runs Windows and it also has a microphone, speakers, and access to the internet. The first step is going to be to open a web browser of your choice. We're just going to grab Google here and type in Echo Link. I should find us a website at echolink.org. We'll go ahead and head on over there. You can see um, there is a brief overview of what Echolink is. Again, basically, we're going to use computers, the internet, to connect directly to FM transceiver, transceivers attached to repeaters, and we can talk just about anywhere there's one of these set up. Uh, so let's go ahead and just skip right to it. Hit the download button. And once we're on the download page, you'll see right here at the very top in big friendly letters, the download for Echolink for Windows. We'll just go ahead and hit that and let it download. As soon as it's done, it's pretty quick. It's not a very big file. We're just going to go ahead and click it and uh, we'll get it opened up. Now, you're going to see this warning because Echolink uh, it hasn't paid Microsoft to be recognized. That's okay. This is normally something to be concerned about, but this time I will promise you it's all right to go ahead and hit this more info link right here. And uh, that'll say that uh, this this is a file called Echo Link Setup by Synergetics LLC. And do you want to go ahead and run? In this case, yes, we want to go ahead and run. That'll start up the installer here, and we'll get this cool little splash screen. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of Google back here, and we'll hit install to let the system start up. You'll get what's called user access, uh, user account control. Uh, this basically is Windows making sure that uh, you want this software that's about to execute. You want it to go. So we'll go ahead and hit yes. And then the install program will start up. We'll go ahead and hit the next button. Uh, review and agree to the license agreement. And then uh, if you want to change the location where Echolink will install, you can do it here. I'm just going to hit the next button. And then finally, we'll hit the install button to let it do its thing. There we are. Setup, or I'm sorry, installation is complete. We'll just go ahead and hit the launch Echo Link uh, tick box there and hit the finish button. We'll get another box here that says installation completed. If we can close that, and then we will get Echo Link here. Uh, it starts right up into the setup wizard, and it's pretty easy. Uh, we'll just go ahead and hit the next button. 99% uh, of the people out there are going to be computer users. This, this means that you're going to be an average operator that uses Echolink to connect to repeaters across the world. Uh, SysOps are those few folks that are using Echolink to offer their repeater to Echolink users. So most of the time, we're not going to bother with this. We're going to stay with a computer user. So we'll go ahead and hit the next button. You're going to put in your information for me, N5TXL. My password, I already have one. Since you may not have one, uh, like the instructions say, just go ahead and put your a password in that you want to use. So this is also where you're going to set the password. Uh, go ahead and put in your first name. 
and uh, where you are. I'm in Fort Worth. And finally, your email address. This is very important to have. Uh, I apologize, I, I had to blur this one out. So, all right, once you get that information in, we'll go ahead and hit the next button. This is going to uh, get you to the, the closest server. So you're going to want to pick whatever is closest to you. I'm in the Southern United States, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it on the Southern US setting here. Go ahead and hit the next button. And this is an important step, folks. When you get to the screen, go ahead and hit the firewall test button. Uh, this is going to make sure your internet connection uh, and router system is going to allow Echolink to work. Most modern routers do not need any work here, so you should be able to just get a successful test just like I did just now. Uh, if you don't, go ahead and hit that help button and it's going to give you a full help topic here on, on how to try and get the Echolink through your router. Uh, that may be an upcoming video where we go through and troubleshoot a firewall in order to get uh, Echolink's UDP packets through the firewall. But Anywho, um, we got a successful test. We'll go ahead and close down that box and then click next here. And uh, setup is complete, we're all done. So we'll hit the finish button and Echo Link will go ahead and start up. You'll get uh, tips of the day here if you want to keep these up every time you start up Echo Link. That's actually pretty useful for new users. You can also hit the next tip button here and read through what they have. Or you can uncheck the show tips and close it out. When you are doing your setup, if you're brand new to Echolink, you're going to get uh, a prompt to validate your license. Uh, Echolink wants to make sure everybody using their software is actually a uh, properly licensed TAM and that we don't have anybody impersonating anybody else. So back here on the website, if you look over here, right underneath download, there is validation. And here you put in your call sign for me, N5TXL. And uh, when I click continue, you're going to see that I've already been validated um, a couple of years ago. Uh, but you will get a series of steps to validate your license uh, with Echolink. If you have any trouble, head on over here to the support and facts off the main page. And then right here we have the call sign validation. And read through here, there's some really good information if you're having trouble validating your license. Worst case scenario, if you're having a trouble that you just can't get past. Uh, back on their uh, home page, we can go back into support here. And uh, there is a uh, link here where you can, um, I'm, I'm sorry, not a link, a form here that you can fill out um, requesting assistance uh, from their tech support team. Um, if you're having trouble with call sign validation, then there's an option here and give them, you know, a quick brief description of what's going on. So once you've done all that, you'll get an email saying that you've been validated. And once you have been validated, uh, you can use and connect to Echolink on any of the servers. There's a couple of different ways you can find, uh, a Echolink repeater. Um, I'm just going to get this window just a little bit bigger here so it's easier to see. Uh, the first way is to just directly browse through. Uh, we'll go ahead and expand locations and North America and United States. I'm in Area 5, so let's go ahead and click Area 5. And then here they are, all the uh, activated repeaters that we can connect to in Area 5. Um, any of these are actual repeaters. Uh, we'll this is a good example here. Uh, the dash R is an actual repeater and the dash L is simplex to a system that is connected to a repeater. So it's, it's basically the same thing. It's just a different setup. The, the dash R is actually at the repeater and the dash L is somebody that's connecting their radio to the repeater for you. Uh, you'll occasionally see um, like little, little heads here. Uh, these are actual users. You can, yes, that's that's right. You can actually connect to users via Echo Link. So we can you know, open up the test or the search field here with the binoculars. I'm going to type in N5TXL and there I am. Yep, you can even connect to me. All right. So to give you a good example of what it's going, uh, what it's like when you connect to a, a repeater, I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect to the test server. 
And when I connect here, we'll get an audio response. Welcome to the Echolink test server. This server records your transmissions and plays them back to help you adjust your transmitted and received audio. Please feel free to connect as often as you like. This is an outstanding repeater to test on because uh, you can use your transmit button right up here in the top left or your PTT button, which by default is a space bar on the keyboard, to transmit to the server and uh, whatever you say to it, it will record and say back to you. Uh, this is super helpful when you're trying to balance out the uh, gain levels on your microphone. Um, I br mentioned briefly there for a moment uh, the PTT. You can set that up to be any key or a, a selection of keys on the keyboard. Um, to do that, you can do preferences right here, uh, this little guy on the toolbar, or you can go to station. Nope, I'm sorry. You can go to tools and preferences. And uh, we're going to jump over here to connections. And then right down here at the bottom, you see the PTT control. And this will open up um, where we can set what button we want to use as our push to talk. So we can do a momentary or we can set it as uh, on off. I like it to have uh, to be on momentary. So that means when I let go of the, the button, it stops transmitting. This is actually going to be where I wrap up this video. In the next video, we're going to look at installing Echolink on an Android phone and possibly even a iOS phone. Thank you very much for making it through the video. If you have any questions, be sure and put them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Besides that, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. 7-3s, N5, TXL.